I stopped talking to him because I was having car trouble. You know, I was telling him about the car trouble that I was having. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not expecting you to come and fix my car. Can you please be proactive with at least helping me find the part or maybe find a mechanic? What if he knows absolutely nothing about cars and he didn't want to embarrass himself? You know, we hear all the time, can you change the tire? And I will say this first and foremost to all the grown men tuning in, if you don't know how to change a spare tire, I'm not going to clown you. Learn. But really, because if you were to check and you and you catch a flat and you got to call a truck to change, that's... It hit it, different. Yeah, it might be over. It, it might hit be over. so different. What it do, everybody? And thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I am your host, Day Day, and today I have a great one for y'all because we are joined by a... Woman of many hats, a choreographer, a poet, a fellow podcaster. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by Sev the Fairy. What up? What's up? I'm so happy that I'm about to be having this conversation with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy you're here. We, you know, this is the second time we ran it back. Right. You know, the first time, technical difficulties, but. It happens. Yeah. Like you it have happens. to go through the growing pains and stuff. I've. You know, was messing up with the cameras and whatnot. And mm -hmm. like, even now, people see it and be like, damn, you da da da. Fake it till you make it. The journey is yeah. part of it. Yeah. It's literally part of this whole entertainment thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm actually <laughs> glad you're back on this side because, you know, it's, it's just a better setup. Finally got some wall art. Right. Got the, you know, aesthetics popping off and whatnot. So. I'm glad you I'm glad you're here for the high quality stuff. Right. You know what I mean? But enough about the show. How are you? How have you been? I've been great. Yeah. I've been great. That pause, um, what was what was the meaning behind it? Because I just wanted to be intentional with literally how I've been feeling lately. And when mm -hmm. I say lately, I would say like the past three months. Okay. Past three months. Yeah. Like I've been feeling really great the past three months. So Good. that's what that pause was. Um Everything been going well. I've had a lot of clarity in my life when it comes to personal, when it comes to business. So mm -hmm. I'm great. Yeah, that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you've just been able to take time to sit back, reflect. Right. And really see shit for what it is. Right. Um, so you are a co-host of the 12th Hour Podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, just briefly, what is that exactly? And, you know, what does the conversations consist of? Okay. So 12 Hour Podcast, um, I am one of the four hosts that's on the podcast. Um, so the 12 Hour Podcast, the things that we like to talk about is, you know, spirituality, vulnerabilities. It's a pretty much open conversation between friends. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very vulnerable with each other. We don't like to do like a bunch of like gossip and stuff yeah. like that. We don't really want to talk about like what's going on, like per se on the internet when it right. comes, to, you know, like shade room type yeah, of stuff, yeah, things like yeah. that. Like, nah, we don't want to talk about that. We might reference mm -hmm. something, but um, we don't really touch on that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're more focused on, like, things that help us grow, things that can help other people grow, and we're just giving our perspective on those things yeah. and our journey. That's what's up. And I like how you touched on the vulnerable part. Y'all yeah. are being vulnerable amongst one another. And as being a podcaster, you realize when you're on your platform being mm -hmm. vulnerable, um, it's not just, I'm not just being vulnerable with you and for Literally. you right now. It's also for everyone tuning in. Right. And I realized that, that, so do you ever take it to consideration? Like when you're having th these discussions and you're being vulnerable, like, mm -hmm. okay, this is going to reach a much larger audience that's going to see a side of me that I may have never seen before. Right. Like what's your thought process or how do you handle, you know, certain situations like that hearing from somebody, Oh, I heard you talk about this and that. And they give they, you know, input on you like, damn, I did kind of go deep. Right. And maybe I didn't want this person to see that side right. of me, but they did. Um, I'm not going to front when I first was like, you know, oh my gosh, I'm going to be on a podcast. I was very, very concerned about like how people would receive what I say because, mm -hmm. you know, I know what I mean when I'm saying what I'm saying. I know right. the place that I'm coming from, but mm -hmm. how someone receives something yeah. that's entirely on them and they're not wrong for it. Um, so that was something I was concerned about. I was like, dang, you know, I hope people don't take my words and, you know, just send me negative energy or think the worst or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, now... 
I'm more so like, okay, well, this is how I feel. And I think what people fail to realize when it comes to just talking in general or mm -hmm. uh, podcasting or whatever it is, is that whatever I say at a specific time, it may stick for a lifetime. That may, be, that may be who I am for a lifetime, or it may be a particular part of my journey. It was probably a phase. Yeah. And that was something that I believed in that moment. Yeah. But it could change, because I change, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't stay the same. And I think people be a little bit too critical and harsh on people when it comes to those things. Like, like for example, on social media, mm -hmm. you will see that somebody had a, a tweet that they tweeted Oh yeah. Years, Years ago, get, get brought up. And I'm yeah. like, if they still feel that way, right. okay, then all right, I can understand. But like, if they're not that same person no more, like, can we just like cut some slack? Yeah. Like, can we just chill? Because they they may be in a different space. They met a, they probably met somebody that changed their whole perspective mm -hmm. on that, you know? So that's an absolute, I love that you touched on that because, uh, nah, that's true as hell. Being someone, whether you're a podcaster, content creator, whether you're just on social media, being even a tad bit of vulnerable right. at all, that happens yeah. a lot. Like I'll listen back to episodes. I technically been doing podcasts since 2020. I'll listen back to episodes like, damn. I mean, I I know where I was then, but right. I ain't know. I don't even move like that no you more. You know, like I don't even think like that. Yeah. Like I, Real quick. So on 12 Five, I'm pretty sure y'all talk about dating, dating today and whatnot. Um, I was watching um, something from Union Church. It was like a, you know, a single summit type thing, okay. you know, open Q&A. And just about everyone, they ask a question, is dating ghetto today? You see it on social media. Everyone calls dating ghetto and like 98% yeah. of the room said yes. Okay. How do you see dating today? The dating market, the dating realm, is it ghetto? How do you see it for, and are you dating? Um. So for me... I can I can only speak from my perspective mm -hmm. and what I've gone yeah. through with dating. Um, I've had phases in my life where dating was ghetto. <laughs> um, what made it ghetto? Uh, sometimes shit that I did. Sometimes shit that the dude did. It it just really depends. But um, but don't you feel like you need that type of shit to? You do. Yeah. You do. You do. But it's different now because of social media and mm. because. We're in, it's not a bad thing uh, that everybody has their opinion and their perspective now because people always had their own opinion and perspective. It's just now it's more broadcasted because we have social media so we can literally see how everybody think, how everybody feel. Um, so it make it, it, it make it a little bit more difficult because dating is such a trend mm. and it's such a, um, yeah, it's such a trend. Like people want to ideally date to look like such a good couple mm -hmm. and it's like nah like if you want something that's gonna last like you gotta really like go through some things and i'm yeah. not saying you gotta go through like super bad things but you gotta go and grow through some things yeah. to like really have that person that you see your grandparents done had and you know so it ain't gonna be pretty the whole way through it's not and uh also on social media um i, th I think that when it comes to dating people talk about it on social media they give their opinion on whatever aspect of dating they may have. Right. Let it be something in an opinion that someone else disagrees with. Mm. They are quick as fuck to embarrass you or bash you for having yeah. a fucking opinion yeah. on social media. Yeah. And that could lead to people kind of, you know, going in the shadows that really think or feel that way. You know what I mean? Especially, especially, especially today with this whole uh gender war between black men and black women and i said black men and black women because yeah. we're the only race doing this dumb yeah. ass shit <laughs> but it's huge on social media dudes calling themselves alpha uh you know women um uh, you know whether they're deemed it from another woman or from a man yeah. feminine or masculine like it's the same mm -hmm. shit but let you kind of side one way on it yeah. that doesn't, that maybe the vast majority doesn't agree with, you will get bashed to fucking no, death. legit. And that could send people running, send people hiding because you may be like, ah, damn, that is how I feel, but damn, everybody on social media, they just made this motherfucker block his account you know, because like, they bashed him for his opinion. <laughs> and it's so crazy because it's like, like everybody throws out the word balance. Mm-hmm. You know, everything has to have balance. You know, balance is balance that. 
And I'm like, dang, do everybody stop believing in balance when they have their opinion and they don't like when somebody else have a different opinion? Right. Because there's a balance to everything. It like, is. if I'm thinking like this, another person may think like that. So it's mm-hmm. like, we live in a world full of perspective and opinions and yeah. facts and whatever, you know, truth. And I mean, truth is really dependent upon, you know, the person. Because mm-hmm. I may have a truth and you may have a different truth. Yeah. But there's only one truth. Exactly. So at the end of the day. So, yeah, like, I don't know. People, um, I don't know why people are so bashful when it comes to that. Well, no, let me take that back. I do understand because I have done it before. Mm-hmm. But you have some people that genuinely like to debate you have some people that like to bash because it strokes their ego it makes them feel like they're just more right like they got this whole thing figured out mm-hmm. like it's different reasons as to why it's done but and i think one reason also is maybe deep down inside they may feel that way as literally. well but they're too insecure to and they're you, rejecting it yeah, they're yeah. trying to reject it they don't yeah. like it yeah and i've done that before mm-hmm. so yeah that's definitely a reason too so i don't know why but to answer your uh First question. Um, first, let me ask you this. Like, what do you define as dating? <clears throat> so what I define as dating is going on dates, getting intimate with someone, getting to know them to a point where it could possibly lead to y'all being in a relationship and then uh, possibly lead to marriage. And I think it's different levels of dating. I think people can date just to date. Mm-hmm. They don't want to be in a relationship. They just like dating. Serial they, dater. Yeah, serial dater. They just like spending time with people. They may, you know, I'm going to just call it what it is. Um, they're not looking to get past the talking stage, yeah. which is a form of dating. Yeah. So they'll go, and I'm saying this because I'm literally, I'm putting myself in these shoes mm-hmm. because I've been in it right now. I'm in a different space, but mm-hmm. been in here for a couple years where I know I'm not going to be in a relationship with this with this girl. But- I'll go on dates with her. Yeah. We'll talk. Feelings may or may not be involved. Yeah. But I know it won't get anywhere f- past that. So I know it's going to be like a three month top mm-hmm. mark in gotcha. this, you know, uh, relationship. Not actually like that, but relationship with this person. But I'm cool with that. I know yeah. what it's going to be. I want to I wanna at least enjoy these couple, you know, months with her. But when she gets to the point where she's like, okay, I need something serious. I'm going to respectfully fall back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've been there for years. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But but I will say this. When I was in that state, one thing I did was mm-hmm. always keep it 100. Got to. Always. Got to. I never let any chick on. I mean, once. I think once my whole mm-hmm. lifetime. That was like my karma. But I, I, don't, I don't do that shit. I don't tell her I want to be with her. Just to just to have sex with her, just to hang out with her, yeah. just to get her to fall for me. Hell nah. Yeah. I keep it off bucks. I keep it a hundred. Mm-hmm. But I will say this: I've learned mm-hmm. that from doing that, that may actually kind of mm-hmm. draw her. Some in women closer. like to chase. Exactly. Some women like some women want to be able to say like I got him, exactly. knowing that this is a space that he's in. Exactly. And can I can I be honest with you? What's up? <laughs> I've never said that just to get that reaction out yeah. of her, but after a while when I noticed that women would get that reaction out of me saying that I'm not looking for it, then I mean shit, I Yeah. You know, I'm not saying I'd used it intentionally as as bait, but I mean shit, you did I did, your part, I, did though. I did slightly take advantage, but yes, I like you still that was did your part. That was my intention. <laughs> that was my intention. Yeah. So, um to answer your question, yes, dating can be that mm-hmm. or it can be you dating going on dates from when to get to know them because you are looking for a relationship. You are mm-hmm. looking for marriage. Yeah. So you are trying to see like, are y'all on the same, you know, frequency as far as what you're looking for, mm-hmm. y'all intentions. Right. Um, I'm not really big on having to be a perfect match to get married. I yeah. think um, having to have like uh, some type of, you know, connection, mm-hmm. of course, like you're not going to, yeah. this isn't a third world country where we're just forcing a marriage, but some right. type of connection. But I don't think you have to be a perfect match. No. I think that stops a lot of people from actually getting what they're looking for because they're looking for that perfect and match. having it be long term. Yeah, as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that stops a lot of people. So it can. That's how I see dating. Yeah. How, how do you see dating? Um. Well, to answer your question that you asked me earlier, mm-hmm. um, you asked me, "Am I currently dating?" Mm-hmm. Um, I would say I would not identify it as exactly dating. Mm-hmm. Um, because for me, dating is more so um is very intentional good intention mm-hmm. good intention because you have bad intentions <laughs> so so is mine a bad or good intention 
Is I, yours a good intent? It's, was, was it's mine only, bad or it good? would only be a bad intention if you were not honest. Okay. Um, yeah, then it would be a bad intention. I Copy. don't think that it's a bad intention because you are saying what it is that you want. Mm -hmm. You are saying where you're at. And then from that point on, the female is making a decision to continue to talk to you, right. chase you, entertain you, whatever. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, no, I don't think uh, that's bad. But uh, for me, yeah, right now, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I'm dating. Like, yes, do I have, like, men that I, like, talk to? Yeah, I do. But, like, I don't take them serious because they're giving me the bare minimum. And the bare minimum in the sense of... um. Most men feel like if you are texting a female, calling a female, mm -hmm. spending time with her, things mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. that that's like, oh, my gosh, this is like, you know, you're going on dates like, oh, my gosh, this is I'm doing really good. And it's mm -hmm. like with any relationship, whether it's a friendship, business relationship, whatever, those same things are required. So I consider that the bare minimum. You're giving me the bare minimum because you're giving me something that I can get from anybody that I come across. Mm. I can go out on a quote unquote, it wouldn't be a date, but I can go out to eat with a business partner, a potential business partner. Right. I can go out to eat with a potential friend. Mm -hmm. I can text or have a phone call with a potential, you know, like yeah. you get where I'm going with this. Yeah. So, you know, to me, those type of things are bare minimum because they're foundational. This is mm. the foundation, you know? Um, so right now, no, I don't I don't consider myself to be dating anybody right now. So two questions. One, um are you you're receiving the bare minimum, which is why you don't really technically, you know, say it is seriously dating, mm -hmm. but are you looking for something beyond that? And two, that bare minimum, um what are some things that the guy does that displays that it's beyond the bare minimum? Mm -hmm. So for me, displaying beyond the bare minimum is, for example, um, being genuinely interested in what I'm interested in and investing in that. And I'm not saying financially, but literally investing in that. So, for example, um, I'm a fellow podcaster. Mm -hmm. We're going to start back filming 12th Hour very soon. Mm -hmm. Um, so if there's something that I'm working on and you can be of help to that, mm -hmm. um, if you can plan around that, you make plans. I don't need you to just like texting me like, oh, you know. Good luck. You know, like, yeah. right. Like help me come up with solutions to things and help me problem solve and help me like be proactive yeah. in what it is I have going on because I'm going to be proactive with you if I'm genuinely interested. Mm -hmm. Make plans with me. You know what I'm saying? Don't just text me day of like, hey, you trying to, you know, get up. You want to go do this? Yeah. And although we're going to be going to do something fun, I like things to be planned. I'm a mother. Mm -hmm. I'm the busiest person that I know. I'm an entrepreneur. I have many things going on. So when you make plans, like, yo, I'm trying to see you this day, this day. I want us to go do this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. And you get creative with it. Mm -hmm. Like, that speak volume to me about what you want. Um, and then you have some people, because it's a balance to everything. You have some men that will do all of that and literally just do it for entertainment. Now, see, that's... <laughs> That's, like, no, that's, that's the ghetto part of yeah, it. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's the ghetto. That's the ghetto part of it. And, and, that, and that's lame because, well, I'm, <laughs> that's such a waste of energy, time, energy, and money. Those are the three things that I'm always mm. speaking on, time, energy, and money. If you, as a man, are doing that, like showing true intentions, coming mm. up with creative dates, going outside the realm, spending time with a chick, just for entertainment, there's a lot of dudes that do that. That's mm. some clown shit to me. Because, again, the time, energy, and money, that costs money. If I'm doing that shit, if a, if I'm doing that shit towards mm -hmm. a girl, I'm into her. Because, mm -hmm. one, I'm cheap as fuck. <laughs> I'm cheap as hell. <laughs> I'm going to hit the walk in the park quick. Mm -hmm. I love Charlotte because there's so many trails and parks. I yeah, love it. It's an easy escape route for me. Well, not escape route because that's really how I'm living. But I love Charlotte because <laughs> so many parks and trails, I'm hitting them quick. Yeah. Weather's starting to get nice. I'm lit. Mm -hmm. And, number two, the time and the energy. Again, I'd rather spend that time and energy towards developing day by day or creating a better me, working out, editing videos, getting better with the podcast, getting tips, creating my email list, getting merged together. So if I'm putting that aside to get, now maybe some dudes just ain't got nothing going for them. Yeah. So maybe that is their thing yeah, that, see, that drives that. them. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. again, that's, mm -mm. that's no substance. Man or woman, if you ain't got no substance, then what the fuck are you doing? Right. Um, and I like how you said, uh, you know, something that you're interested in, show interest in, because I will say this, um, 
not dating right now, but a couple months ago when I was dating, I was I was slightly dating this one chick during the football season. Mm -hmm. And she knows nothing about football, yeah. none of that. But she knows I'm a mm -hmm. crazy, like, absolutely out of my fucking mind Eagles That's what fan. She went to, yeah. Yeah. And she was kind of showing interest towards that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was, you know, you know, kind of sparking conversations mm -hmm. around it or knowing, like, slide with me. If I'm going to a bar to right. watch the Eagles game, she would come with she me. She want to see you in that environment so yeah. she can know you better. And that's sexy. It's, that's very attractive. Yeah. That's very attractive, just how you were saying. Right. Um, so let me ask you, what about an uh, area of interest that you have that he may not be interested in? Is that like a, you know, a red flag for you or do you understand? Um, I would say it's a red flag for me mm -hmm. because I'm not saying that, you know, you are not allowed to not have any interest in what I have going on. Mm -hmm. However, be interested enough to experience it, even if it's just one time, two mm -hmm. times, and then whatever, because it's learning. You're learning this person like what about something he had a bad experience with mm -hmm. in that interest field in the past which is the reason why he doesn't have as much interest in it um still be open mm -hmm. honestly because if you if you had a bad experience in your past and you're bringing that bad experience over here to me what's the point in even dating me trying to talk to me and do anything so try to start with a new slate right okay <laughs> you know because that was one of the things that um, I used to do was like, I'll like, you know, have whatever trauma or bad situation I experienced with somebody else. And then mm -hmm. I'll meet someone else and I'm bringing that trauma with me to them. And I'm not even communicating mm -hmm. the trauma. Like, yeah. I'm not even communicating it. Yeah. I'm just like, no, I'm not open to this. I don't want to do this or whatever. And they don't understand the why, Yeah, you know, and. Most of the time when you explain the why to people and y'all mm -hmm. have that conversation, now you're, you're allowing yourself to be more open. So if you're not even allowing yourself to be open to trying to be involved in my interest, I can't deal with you. And another thing, too, um, it was this one guy that um, I was talking to and um, I stopped talking to him. This may seem so petty for most people, but I stopped talking to him because I was having car trouble. Mm -hmm. Um and, you know, I was telling him about the car trouble that I was having. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not expecting you to come and fix my car. I'm not expecting you to give me money for my car. Mm -hmm. However, can you please be proactive with at least helping me find the part or maybe find a mechanic? Now, what car trouble are we talking about here? Starter. Starter? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you, you had to replace your starter? Yes. All right. So, he was like, oh, all right, that's what's up. So anyway, da, 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 you know, da, da. like, you know what you got going on today? Oh, I'm having like, cause my car literally would not crank up. Like mm -hmm. it eventually did, but it wasn't. Um, so I'm telling you, I have this issue with my car and you like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. Da, 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 da. I'm trying to spend time with you. What are you doing later? And it's like, nigga, I'm telling you, I got a problem with my car. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to spend time. I'm trying to figure out how to get my car fixed. Mm -hmm. what where if I he, can go. What if he knows absolutely nothing about cars, just like mm -hmm. you, knows nothing about cars. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the reason why he showed no interest in it. He didn't want to embarrass himself. Because as men, you know, we hear all the time, nigga, can you change the tire? Can you change the spare tire? Mm -hmm. And I will say this first and foremost uh, to all the grown men tuning in, if you don't know how to change a spare tire, I'm not going to clown you. Learn. Really do your due diligence at the least. Because if you were to check and you, and you catch a flat and you got to call a truck to change, that's... It hit different. Yeah, it might be over. It, it might hit be over. so different. So what if he feared that? He knows nothing about cars. He's like, damn, I was hoping this would never come up. I know nothing about mm -hmm. cars. Let me try to change the subject. Let me deflect the kind of safe face. See, I don't have time for that. Mm. You know? Like, I don't... Like, the place that I'm at in my life, like, I'm very vulnerable. I'm very open. I like to communicate. I am the most understanding person that I know. So... If you tell me that, I'm like, okay, cool. That now I want to like, okay, be like, okay, well, from now on, you know, try to like find a mechanic. You know, if you want to call around to some places, like try to learn, want to learn, like. So if he would have just came out and said that, you would have been right. understanding. I would have been understanding. Okay. It wouldn't. Have, it wouldn't have been a turn off. It wouldn't have been like a oh no because we all grew up different. Mm -hmm. We all have different things that we yeah. choose to you know teach yeah. ourselves and learn about or whatever. So in that moment, by him doing that, he probably it probably would have made him want to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't want a man to have an ego that big. Mm -hmm. That's too big. Yeah. Like on some simple stuff, that's too big. Gotcha. <laughs> I don't want that. Um, I actually taught my ex though how to change um, his brakes. Okay, well, shit, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you, taught my brakes. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm 
if I know how to do something and I can show you how to do it, I'm going to show you how to do it. I expect the same from you. Yeah. So I don't really want a man whose ego is too pride because you've been taught as a man, like, oh, a man is supposed to do this. It's mm-hmm. so like, nah, if you don't know how to do it, maybe I know how to do it. And that's a bonding moment. Yes. That's a building moment. Yeah, definitely. You know how to change brakes. I do. All right, how much? I'm going to have to hit you up for my, for my <laughs> court. Now. I'm for my I haven't court. changed them in so long since my Dodge Nitro because now I have this newer car. And, you know, newer cars, you got to take them to the shop. Yeah. You, you ain't got no choice. That's <laughs> why I'm Honda Accord, baby. All right, Peter Mamba. Um, speaking of Honda Accords, I get kind of sentimental and emotional <laughs> when I speak of this. But uh, I had I had my dream car when oh. I first moved out here to Charlotte. It was a 2015 Honda Accord Coupe. Okay. I'm, I'm from Maryland. So in Maryland, Maryland, Baltimore, I don't know about D.C. as much. Accord Coupes is like that mm-hmm. car. Okay. But that, I mean, I've just always drove Accords. My yeah. very first three cars, I've only drove Accords. They're reliable. I think of it. Yeah, very reliable. And I'm, I'm a cheap bastard. You're frugal. V- very frugal. I'm reliable. <laughs> my, old, my old changes are cheap. Getting service done on my Accords are cheap. Mm-hmm. Had my dream car, 2015 Accord Coupe. Bought it for the low. 12,000 miles on it. I sat on it for like a year and a half, two years before I actually brought it out here. Mm-hmm. I put subs, I put a sub in it, I put speakers in it, I tinted it, I um wrapped <laughs> like out. wrapped like half of the car, painted the rims black, um, did something else on the inside. Shout out to Charge Customs. Get your car done if you're in the DMV area with Charge Customs. And so I bring it out here to Charlotte. I didn't even drive it out here. I never drove it on the highway for like more than an hour. Mm-hmm. My mom drove it out here while I drove my U-Haul. So I'm like, damn, I can't wait to put mm-hmm. it on the highway, drive down to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just really like yeah. drive it. It's a stick shift on top of that. It's a mm-hmm. six speed. Yeah. Um, It wasn't a V6, but it, it get up. What is it on next <laughs> Friday? It ain't 20s. I was literally about- <laughs> <laughs> It ain't 20s. It's just 10, but it's clean. Look. I was literally thought of that. She, Yo, she, was, she wasn't a two pipe. <laughs> she wasn't a two pipe, She was, but she was clean. Right. <laughs> so a month goes by. I'm on a fucking date mm-hmm. at Twin Peaks. And it's it we leave Twin Peaks when they close. I park next to a truck. I back into this big ass, we in, you know, we in Charlotte, these big ass trucks out here. Big ass, you know, F-150. And uh something, a slight, slight noise said, don't park it, but I parked there. I back in, mm. and mind you, it's black on black. It's blacked out. I called her Mamba because she was all black, but she had like a uh fluorescent color like mm-hmm. in the front that looked like a snake gotcha so i called her mamba and um so i backed in going to twin peaks i come out when they close mm. and my whole front is gone my whole front bumper Ooh. and a little bit of the engine it just it was my whole front bumper was gone and it fucked up a little bit in the engine and i saw the white paint it was from the truck next to me and my my soul just left my body yeah i mean that's 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 traumatic yeah so i'm <laughs> i'm thinking you know okay it's the bumper you know i'm a, i'm going to just have to replace that and you know it's going to get some body parts it's going to cost bread but this my baby fuck it let's get her done mm. got it appraised deemed totaled yeah i was fucking i mean it sounded like it was hurt. totaled yeah i was you just still had hurt. a little hope Oh man, I was hurt. And then going back to the yard where she was in, where I had, I took out everything. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. I took out my low, <laughs> excuse me. I took out my low beams. I took out my high beams because I put LEDs yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you put, yeah. I took out my subs. I took out my speakers. I took everything out. And just just doing that, that was tough. That was yeah. like, that was like uh, burying a, a best friend or a family member. I ain't going to hold you. Yeah. Because like this was like my dream call. Right. And you finally got it. And it's like, dang. Gone. And mm. but the thing is, and I ended up getting twice as much that I paid for the car. Yeah. But fuck that. I, I would have rather had the car right. any day. Cause I I was bullshit. I no, I didn't run through the money. I had to get a fucking root canal. That cost fucking bread. Right. But um, you know, I wasn't the most responsible with that bread, yeah. which I figured I wouldn't be, but um my bad. I just went on like a five minute. I yeah, just, nah, the, yeah. you was feeling that. You, yeah, you, we, we you, spoke on the chords. You was, was in your feelings, and that's we, okay. We spoke on the chords that took me somewhere. Uh R.I.P. <laughs> Mamba. I think about you every time I see a Honda Accord coupe go past me and I get sick <laughs> a little bit, especially if it's a two pipe. Um, so real quick, just mm-hmm. for a second back to the dating. Um, you mentioned earlier that you have a kid. You have a son? Yes. How old? He's six. Six. All right, mm-hmm. cool. Big sellers. Sellers, mm-hmm. you said big sellers. Big sellers. His big name sellers. is Marcellus. Marcellus. So. Mm-hmm. Big sellers. That's what's up. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I had a friend back in the day named Marcellus. Mm-hmm. Um, so as far as dating, are you are you, so you're, you're currently not with the father of Marcellus, right? No. So as far as dating today, um, having a child that's six years old, um, how does that go? How how was that taken into consideration 
with mm-hmm. dating? Like, are you bringing anybody into that space or do you see yourself never doing that? Or how does that happen? Um, I mean, of course, like I want to date somebody and, you know, be with somebody who I feel like is also compatible with my son. Mm-hmm. Um, Would that but, be a complete red flag? Say you get along with someone great, y'all been dated for months, you bring them around your son and they just don't click well. Yeah, that's a red flag for me. Gotcha. Because my son is like... <laughs> My son is like the easiest child. He's not yeah. bad at all. He's really an old soul. He's six going on 60. So okay. he's very like cool and relaxed. Like I don't, like my son is not bad. I don't have to like constantly repeat myself. Like uh-huh. do this and do that. And like yeah. he understands space. He understands not doing too much. So like if you can't get along with my son, mm-hmm. that's like the biggest red flag because go. why not? I'm the exact same way with Desi. If Desi... It's not feeling somebody that I don't care how much I like them. Easy. If Desi not feeling you, we can't rock shorty at all. And for those who for those who don't know, Desi is my dog. I don't have a kid. <laughs> um, Desi's my dog. She's my daughter with four legs. Um oh. yeah, but my bad, you were saying. Yeah, but yeah, that's a red flag for me. Um, but now nah, when I'm getting to know someone and you know, dating them and stuff, you know, that is one of the things that I do ask about. Like, how do you feel about kids? Mm-hmm. Um, I have came across men that's like, you know, they don't want to date a female with kids. Mm-hmm. And okay, well, cool. Is it something that you're open to, though? Like, mm-hmm. are you open to it? And they'd be like, you know, I'm open to it. It just depends on how the kid is. Because yeah. some people got badass kids. Mm-hmm. Some people got crazy relationships with, you know, the mother of their child or mm-hmm. the father of their child. So it just it's situational for some men. Um, but at least they're being honest about yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, Have you ever had somebody that was kind of, have you ever dated somebody that was like faking that energy just to get closer to you, yes. but you ended up finding out that's not what it really was? Yes. How did that go? Um, I was actually, like, it hurt my feelings. Mm. It hurt my feelings because it's like, if you wanted to experience me, mm-hmm. then you're not wrong for that. You want what you want, but at the same time, why lie about something that's so important? Like very. for us women that got kids, that can be very traumatizing. Like that can mm. be very like, like that can make us want to, you know, be like, mm, you know, I don't really want to trust you because I've had this happen. So um, it hurt my feelings. Um, And I told him how I felt about it. And um, he understood and he seemed to be apologetic. I don't know if he's still moving that way with other women, but... How did you find out that his energy was fraud in that department? When he met my son. Oh, you could just tell. Yeah, I could tell. And my son wasn't comfortable. So what did he say? Like, did he say he was like great with kids and all type? He said that he loved kids. He said that he's been with, you know, females that have had kids, Mm -hmm. which I'm sure you have if Mm -hmm. you're going through these lengths. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, but when he got around my son, he wasn't interactive. He wasn't trying to get to know him, you know, mm. like, and kids are easy to get to know. You ask them mm. the dumbest questions. You like pizza? Yeah. They going to have a whole conversation yeah. with you about pizza if that's what, you know, they like. So, And he, you can tell um, when someone's like, when their vibe is uncomfortable or yeah. you can't fake that. Yeah, you can't fake that. Because like you said, it's not kid, like talking to an adult. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Um, so after that, I just told him, I was like, you know, I, I think it's best that we don't talk because my son is not comfortable, Mm. you know, being around you, talking to you. And I'm not comfortable with the fact that he's uncomfortable and that you lied. Yeah. So So did he come out and say that he was... Yeah, I mean, he said it, it was difficult for him. He uh, apologized for it. Gotcha. Um, he still said he wanted to talk to me, but I'm like, at this point, there's no point. I'm completely turned off. Yeah. So um, would you would you prefer to date someone who has a child themselves because maybe they can be more relatable? Or would you prefer someone who doesn't have a child mm-hmm. or is it neutral? Um, it's neutral for me mm-hmm. uh, because if I date someone that has a child, um, I have to see the type of parent you are. And I need to know how your relationship is with the mother of your kid. Mm. Um, baby mama, baby mama. Yeah, I'm tired because of you. some, like, honestly, like real, like real shit, mm-hmm. like the relationship me and my son's father have is amazing. That's like, it's amazing. Like, I wish that more people relationship was like that because yeah. ours is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my kid is not growing up in a broken home, although we're in separate homes, yeah. you know? He's not growing up in a broken home. Like, so I'm not saying that everybody relationship have to be like that with the mother of the kids, but like, 
I want you to care about the mother of your kid. I mm -hmm. want you to still nurture her. Yeah. I want you to still consider her feelings. Like I want all of those things. So if you're not doing those things and you're literally one of those people that's like, oh, well, you know, I'm just doing this for my kid. Like your kid can feel that. Well, what if the dude does want that with the baby mother, mm -hmm. but she's stubborn towards that, mm -hmm. maybe because of the fact they're not together. Mm -hmm. And she uses that, uh, you know, and, and resentment and mm -hmm. just, you know, uh, acts out towards him in mm -hmm. spite, mm -hmm. even though he wants what you were saying. Yeah. He wants that, you know, even though they're not together, he wants that positive co-parenting for the sake of the child. Mm -hmm. But she's just not trying to hear none of that shit. Mm -hmm. She's like, fuck you, nigga. I'm going to make your life a living hell. Mm -hmm. Fuck what you talking about. Mm -hmm. Even if you see that, you know, would that still be, you know, good for you? It, it like, plays you know, a factor because my question to him would be, what are you doing? What steps are you taking now? Um you know, to work through that or, you know, to where it's not even a factor because the steps like because men, I don't know what it is, but a lot of men, when they do experience that, they feel like it's nothing that they can do. It's like they really genuinely Again, feel that way. He tried. He he tried in person, over the phone with her family. And I, I'm speaking of this. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm speaking on behalf of um a, a specific uh friend and relative mm -hmm. of mine does the actions yeah. you know what i'm saying has held it down financially um being there for the kids spending mm -hmm. lots of time with the kid taking them to school picking them up from the school mm -hmm. um doing all sorts of that so he's taking actions but even still he's treated you know bad from the mom out of spite mm -hmm. even though he's he, he like i get what you're saying some people may be like fuck it i can't do nothing yeah. but even still he's like i'm gonna still try like you tripping this for the kid i'm gonna still try yeah but it's still not getting through have he taken the steps to possibly try to take her to therapy, mediation, things like that? So when I say what steps have you taken, I'm talking about those type of things. Because I understand I have friends mm -hmm. that give the father of their kids a hard time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I talk to my friend and, you know, I try to reason with them. But, you know, when people mind made up about certain things, it just is. So yeah. you just... Yeah. You just be there for them and however way you can. But um So it sounds like you're saying there's always some type of There's always step a solution. You can, you there's can try. Always a solution. Even if you gotta go to court. I think court should be a last resort for people. Now, Anybody. now what I'm thinking of is after court. Mm -hmm. Even after court, she's taking them to court mm -hmm. and it's, you know, he can only see the child what, once every two weeks, like mm -hmm. for like an hour on FaceTime or something. Now, mm -hmm. That's some real shit. Yeah, it is. Um, So even after that, you're saying mm -hmm. there's still a solution. There is always after. a solution. Okay, so what would you say uh, if your friend, you have mm -hmm. a guy friend mm -hmm. whose uh, baby mother took him to court. Mm -hmm. Uh, he lost a custody battle. Mm -hmm. He can only see the child once a week, once every, yeah, once a week for like 30 minutes on FaceTime. Mm -hmm. That's that's all he gets. Mm -hmm. What would you say, because it's always a solution, so what would you kind of advise him on towards making that better? Take those same steps. So what men who go, th who go through those type of things, what mm -hmm. they fail to do before they even get to the part where, you know, it's rejected they fail to document everything that they're doing leading up to that custody battle. Mm. That's where they make the worst mistake. You have to document. So whatever solution it is that you're attempting to provide, mm -hmm. document that. Go try to seek therapy. If she chooses not to show up to therapy, it don't matter. You did your part. Cool. Documentation. Have the therapist, you know, write it off, whatever, whatever. Um, if you buy your kids stuff, keep the receipts. If you cash up, you send money, whatever it is that you do, documentation is key. Even if you got to communicate with her through email, which she probably ain't going to do because she's mm -hmm. being bitter. But documentation is key to everything. So if none of that work and he lose the custody battle, because I was Once again, yeah, because I, I was just saying, and I'm, I'm not even making this, I'm not even making this shit up. I, like, this is literally someone I know, yeah, had documentation mm -hmm. and that still wasn't good enough, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, do you let well, me ask, let me ask you this do you think that the court, when it comes to a situation like that, do you think that the court is in favor for the mother? Um, yes, and no, Explain. I would say that. Um, because there's been instances where I've seen the court actually take sides with the male, um, but. But majority of the time, yes, I would say the female. Um, I would say, yeah, they do take the mother's side a lot. Why do you think that is? Hmm. Why do I think that is? As a mother. 
Hmm. I don't have an answer for that right now mm. because it's many things that play a factor. I think with women, um, it's easier um, to... That's a, okay. This is the best way to put it. That is a so the fact that a female even has to come to court and go to court that's emotional. Like that is that has emotional impact. Can I tell you something? What black men hate court. Yeah, that's a generational trauma yeah. effect passed down to us. Yeah, we hate yeah. court, especially if it's a any type of like going into court with a possible. Um, outcome of you getting some type of penalty, whether that's being fined, whether that's not seeing your kids, whether that's going to jail, mm -hmm. whatever it meant, whatever it is, black men hate court. Yeah. I would say more, I, you're saying it's emotional for y'all. I think it's more traumatic for us mm -hmm. going into court. Oh, not for sure. But when I say emotional, I'm saying in a sense of they're providing a solution emotionally. They're mm -hmm. fixing it. So that's what the government has always done, even when they broke up the black family. They are providing uh, emotional stability of some sense to the female. So it's easier to manipulate those emotions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why um, part of the reason I think that's part of the reason why um, it is in favor of the female, because it's easier to manipulate that woman because of the emotions that's already there. Now, with y'all men, y'all men are more logical when it comes to things. So. Instantly with court, it's a no-brainer for y'all. Mm -hmm. But women want a lot of the times right now solutions. Mm -hmm. So if that right now solution can be going to court, that's what's going to happen. I believe uh, men are more willing to work through a lot of issues when it comes to co-parenting. Yeah. I feel like more men are willing to do the work and go through the arguing and go through all that instead of going to court most women just be ready to go to court. Yeah. They don't want to work through it. And uh, that's one of the things I admire about myself. I give myself props. When me and my son's father uh, broke up, um, there was a lot of things that was happening and people was telling me like, oh, you know, you need to take him to court. You need to put him yeah, on child, child support. support. Like I had family and friends telling me yeah. to do it. And my gut was like, no, don't do that. Like, this is a phase. This is not something that's going to last because at the end of the day, I knew the man ultimately that I was mm -hmm. dealing with outside of the emotion. Like I already had seen the type of father he was. I already seen the type of person he was. So I trusted in that. Mm. And I was like, I'm not going to take him to court and I'm not going to put him on child support. And we worked through all of that. I focused on what I wanted the goal to be. And that's what it is now. Now he's in a relationship. I told him, like, yo, if you get in a relationship... I want to be able to, you know, still spend time with you and my son together. I don't yeah. want you to be with an insecure female that yeah. think that I want to be with you. Right. So now he he's in a relationship with a woman who, like, literally, I'm going over there tomorrow and I'm kicking it with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, Man. we're all going to sit, eat dinner together, watch the yeah. TV and stuff. We celebrated my son's birthday together in Florida. Mm -hmm. Like, we flew out there together. They was in a room. Me and my son was in our room. Yeah. You know, we had a great time. So I'm still able to have that type of relationship with him because we work through all of that. It's not easy, but it's like any other relationship. Mm. Literally, I still have to nurture him. I still have to communicate with him. Yeah. I still have to consider his feelings and I want to. So when you're, when people break up or even if they're not in a relationship with uh, the father of their child, mm -hmm. they instantly feel like, oh, well, you know, we're not together no more. I don't have to do these things. Yeah. Nigga, you got to do it 10 times more now because right. you have a kid. Right. <laughs> you have, you still have to do those things. That's what it's about. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. That was amazing. I, yeah. I want to give you, I want to give you a round of applause too as well for that. <laughs> I want to give you props for that too, because man, that is a great example and yeah. a great reason to, you know, uh, go towards that path. So yeah, I'm a, I'm actually going to clip that. That's actually going to be a whole separate YouTube <laughs> oh, you. video uh, on its own. Yeah. No, that, that was amazing. That truly was amazing, and it and it like you said, it really does have the biggest impact on the you know biggest factor, the kid. Right. You know what I'm saying? I can say that I've seen that like with my family, like um, with my mom, uh, kind of like the same thing. Like she'll you know be cool with a like a uh, child's dad's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Out of the sake of the kids. Yeah. And we don't look at it as weird. We like yo, that's what's up, man. Y'all you know. Y'all both, 
know what I'm saying? Like showing us love and we see mm-hmm. that y'all can get along. That's better than seeing, oh shit, they together, you know they about to fight, they beef, and that's draining. Yeah, that's and your, and the kids subconsciously know what's going on. Exactly. Like literally my son, it made me feel so good the other day. This literally happened like two days ago. I was talking to him on FaceTime and he was like, Mommy, can you come over here and hang out with me and, mm-hmm. you know, uh his dad's girlfriend? Mm-hmm. And I was like, Yeah, we'll arrange it and I'll come over there. But the fact that he knew he could ask that, because mm-hmm. some kids automatically know yeah. I can't ask my parents to come and spend time even at three years old they subconsciously know that's just not it's it's not an option they know if if they even bring the name up you know like they know that so it made me feel so good to know that my son can ask a simple question like that like I was like cool we doing our part and like for example like I'm not saying me and him is like 100% good like we don't bicker and argue yeah, and stuff like yeah. that cuz we do but we literally um got into it maybe like 2 months ago and it was like uh it was actually a big argument and guess who mediated it his girlfriend she mediated it mm. and she did it so beautifully she listened to me she listened to him okay she's saying this you're not you're not listening to what she's saying to you mm-hmm. she's saying this okay Sev, you're not listening to him he's mm-hmm. saying this to you yeah. and we came to resolve that's what's up because she helped us you know what yeah. i'm saying so your partner the person you date plays a big role in the relationship too that you have with the father or mother of your kids as well big role so that's yeah. huge yeah, yeah for that sure was huge. we just gave like a clinic right there <laughs> do you want any more kids I do. Okay, how many? Yeah, um, I don't really have a set number. It's gonna be up to my husband. So gotcha. however many he want, I want. He wants eight kids. I'm having eight kids. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. Um. All right. Cool. So to to finish our dating conversation, I have a question mm-hmm. for you. What's up? And I'll give you credit. You you asked this earlier. Oh. I'll, yeah, I'll okay. give you credit. For it. <laughs> if you could date, was it celebrity? Yeah. If you could or date. <laughs> Any celebrity, who would it be? That is so... Like, I asked that question to you, but that's like a really... uh, I thought you asked it because you knew someone off top. Hell no. I Uh asked because I just genuinely wanted to know your answer. It it was a random question that popped in my head. Um, You want me to answer why you think? Yeah. All right. Um, Yeah, you're right. It is tough. But I've always had like a top three. If I could date, like seriously date, I do have like a, a date and fuck celebrity mm-hmm. type thing. I'll yeah. give you both. Why not? <laughs> Date, I would go with Jenna Aiko. Okay. I fucking love Jenna Aiko. Mm-hmm. Um, I just love how she's like, she's very feminine, but she's mm-hmm. like, also at the same time, I just feel like she's a very feminine and subtle. Assertive. Elegant, mm-hmm. assertive sex demon. Mm. And that's what I want in my woman. <laughs> okay. So I would date Jenna Aiko, plus her voice. Yeah. I love, I love, uh, you know, beautiful voices. Her voice on It's a Vibe, when she sang the hook on. Oh, yeah. The When her part came on and she sang her hook on It's a right. Vibe. I remember the first time I heard that, I was like, I need to marry this woman. <laughs> Big Sean got her now, so. Yeah, yeah, for now. Um, <laughs> it's only because I'm not a celebrity. Oh, God. Um, it's like, nah, fuck it with you. <laughs> but, uh, so I would date Jenna Aiko and I would fuck Scissor. Now let me say this. I know okay. Scissor. She's a hot commodity. Oh, everyone's on it right now. Yeah. Rightfully so. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even trying to sound like Ray J when I say this, but I've been on Scissor wave. Mm-hmm. Like I've been wanting to jump in that ocean mm-hmm. for a minute. So I would say Scissor is the fuck. And yeah, I, I would date Janaco. Okay. Dang, this is like really challenging because I'm like, who would I date mm-hmm. that is a celebrity? Um. And then you like the the like um what is it like the go tos um does he have to be black do you only date black I only date black okay so like the go tos for black male is like Michael B Idris Elba yeah um, they don't pop in my head who, at all so who do you got who's who's circulating through your mind right now just <sighs> throw some names out there like <laughs> I don't know what it is but I'm like having like brain fog right now because I'm like damn. It is a lot. Who would I? Yeah, so many options. And then once you go home and look at something on IG, you're someone, like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to pop up. You're like, oh, shit, I forgot about his fine ass. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have an answer for that right now, but I'll have an answer before we wrap up for sure. <laughs> but I don't have it right now. It's not there. All right, cool. 
We'll come, we'll, we'll circle yeah. back to it. We'll circle back to it. That's very challenging. We'll circle back to it. It's crazy the questions I come up with. Um, no, nah, they were they were good questions. Um, I I think you had a few other ones that I was like, I'm gonna bring it up on the show. Uh, damn, I, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. That. I forgot that, forgot that quick too. Um, <laughs> oh, since we were speaking of kids, you asked if I wanted to have kids. Oh yeah, do you? Um, I'll I'll touch on that real quick. Um, yes, I do. Okay, I would love to have kids. How many? Ah, uh, give me at least three. Okay. Girls, I would, boys. I would say three to five. Okay. Now, I don't care as mm -hmm. far as girl boys. Now, if I could choose, mm -hmm. and I'm only saying this lightly because I'm the type, I would be like, I only want boys, and then I'll pop up with all pop girls. girls. So you I'm definitely going to have a girl. Yeah. You said I am. You give girl bad energy. Which is crazy because I can see myself with all, I can see myself with boys, mm. but I could, I'm also realistically thinking I'm going to get a girl. Yeah. Like, so ideally, like say I had three, let's do the max. For entertainment purposes, five kids. Mm -hmm. I would love to have one girl, four boys. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, give me one girl or four boys or two and three boys. Okay. I would definitely want more boys than girls. Okay. Just to, for a couple reasons, for protection purposes. Okay. For one, if anything happens, put that nigga in the dirt. Not kill him, but mm -hmm. if he puts it, if he put his hands on your sister, that nigga done for. Mm -hmm. All y'all get a piece too. Not just okay. the older brother. All y'all get a piece. And if a two for, I'm going to put my daughter on game. Okay. But then they'll be able to put her on game as well, but also from a more uh, relatable mm -hmm. standpoint because they're closer in age. Okay. Let me ask you this. Uh -huh. How open do you see yourself being with your daughters? Like, do you see yourself talking to your daughters about their period? Um, talking to them about your actual experiences that you've had with females, <clears throat> good, bad, all of that. Yeah, so I'm the type kids attract to me, even though I'm not I, I'm not gonna say I'm not crazy about kids. I love kids. Mm -hmm. Especially now I'm starting to realize, wow, babies are fucking adorable. Yeah. When they're not <laughs> mine. When I ain't gotta take care of them and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Like I'm this may sound petty. This may sound petty as hell, but like I said, day by day, mm -hmm. you're getting me. I don't know if I still feel like this. I maybe still do. Maybe it'll change okay. in like a year. But I've always said I'm the type. No oh, lower. You about to say something. <laughs> I'm the type. Say I have a kid, mm -hmm. have a baby. Mm -hmm. I probably won't even like really, 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 really kick it with Shorty until mm -hmm. he or she about four or five. Nah, I got you. You know what I'm saying? I got you. Like, cause I just when I'm dealing with kids, I talk to them. You talk to them how you would talk to anyone else. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I t now I'm not saying I like how we said right. before, because it is a difference yeah, when yeah, talking yeah. to adults and talking sure. to kids. It is a difference. So I'm not saying I'm verbatim. Nah, I got you. But I'm very big on just um because I'm giving them me. But mm -hmm. the kids like that. You like know what I'm think what you're saying is that you're gonna be able to bond better when they're at that four or five year age, like where you can like really talk to when them. they can comprehend more. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying, when they're yep. babies, when they're younger, you gotta get extra, you know, like mm -hmm. kitty voice yeah. and uh extra animated. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they can really grasp it. You know what I'm saying? Cause they're grasping yeah. everything and they, you know, they love animation, yeah. kids and babies. But um, with kids, no, five and up, no matter what the age, I'm just whenever I'm around kids, they like me because I'm I'm kicking it to them, you know, right. on, for the most part, how I'm kicking it to adults. But uh, to answer your question, I see me being that way with my daughters. We said daughters, so we can stick with daughters because it's easy for me to do that with a boy, right? Right. Um, because you know I'm gonna be the type. Hey, <laughs> hey, your, your mama told me to come checking on y'all. Good. <laughs> hey, I, I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping. I'll I'll I'll, mm -hmm. I'll I'll tell her. But so a daughter, um, to answer your question, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm because I'm comfortable with having those type of conversations. Right. Like I don't shy away from conversations. Um, and I actually think part of that has to do with you know I'm comfortable having those conversations with my mom. Yeah. So I think that plays a part in it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I wouldn't you know shy away from that if it's periods, if it's you know dealing with boys, how I have dealt with women. Mm -hmm. Um, in the past, and then of course at that time I plan on being with the mother of my child. So yeah. I'll tell her, you know, you see how we rock now. This is how a man should treat you. Mm -hmm. But I will say, I was like this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I think that's important to throw out there because I think when fathers only tell a girl how to be treated, treat, mm -hmm. I think that kind of pushes them towards wanting to find out that other side. Yep. Because mm -hmm. you see, it like uh, preachers' daughters, or you know, it'd be mm -hmm. like the most well-connected uh, family household 
and they daughter dealing with a drug dealer. Yep. Because they dad's like it's not nah. realistic. You're yeah. not giving them like the raw realistic stuff. Like I can say for me, um, like my parents, like I didn't I didn't have those type of conversations with my parents. Like mm. my dad, I think my dad is more so the type of dad, like if I don't talk about it then, mm. I ain't gotta worry about it. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like yeah. I think yeah. he's more so like that because he he uh he comes from that era. My dad is, dang, how old is my daddy? My daddy is 67, 68. Where are you from? He's uh from York, South Carolina. Where are you from? I'm from Charlotte. Okay. Born and raised. Okay, 704. West side. Okay, okay. West Charlotte, <laughs> but, okay. Um, no, I, but, I only asked because the accent. He said, like, how old is my daddy? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm from Charlotte. Okay. Um, But yeah, so like my dad, like he, he wasn't, he didn't have those type of conversations with me. We've never had to talk mm. about men boys at all yeah ever in my life even at, even now with me like having a kid and you know clearly he know i done had sex you know all of that yeah we have never had that type of conversation before mm. um would you have liked to have had it or does it not even yes. bother yes i would have loved to have that conversation if i would have had those type of talks with my dad it would have prevented so much mm. Um, and if I would have had conversations with my brothers a lot sooner, mm -hmm. it would have prevented so much. Um, and that's a, that's another reason why yeah. I said I would like to have the boys outnumber, mm -hmm. you know, the girls if I reach however many kids. Or if I have four, two and two is perfectly fine. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you know, it would have been uh, way better. But um, I think it's important for men to have those conversations with their sons and their daughters. Yeah. like. Talk to your daughter about her period too, yeah. from a male standpoint. So mm -hmm. that way, if you in class and then say, for instance, you start your period and it's blood in your pants, and these little stupid boys decide to try to pick on you or something like that, you uh -huh. don't take it personal because you know right. that they don't have understanding. You yeah. know, simple things yeah. like, or you know, talking to your daughter about sex when it gets to that point. Mm -hmm. You know, um, things like that. Like I think it's important once again balance yeah. for that conversation to be had on both ends. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 very big on that too. Um yeah, I'm I'm definitely not going to shy away from that. Yeah. Again, I'm I'm going to kick it to him how I how I speak. Right. You know what I mean? I'm, a, I'm That's not, why my son is how he is because yeah. like I talk to my son. Mm. Like we talk, we have conversations. He asks me very interesting questions um at his age. Uh I got like this little video on my phone he was telling me he want a girlfriend and it just so happened i caught it on video mm -hmm. he was like i want a girlfriend and he was like he want a cat woman girlfriend and you know how cat woman is i'm yeah. like yeah. you want a cat woman girlfriend uh -huh. so you want like this sensual yeah. and you know and i'm sensual and stuff so i'm like damn okay so what you say um I, i'll play it for you after this okay. i'll let you i'll actually let you hear it but gotcha. um I was like, uh, I told him like he can't have a girlfriend until he's like 16 or whatever, until he's like almost an adult. And he was like, oh man, like I'm getting big and I want a girlfriend. <laughs> so you mean like a real girlfriend, like right? Because I was girlfriend. already saying. He got and, a little girlfriend. I was already saying in middle yeah. school, you know, we had them like different, you know, we different girlfriend every month or so and whatnot. Y'all yeah. think y'all, we either probably even, I was even saying I love you to my middle school girlfriend. I yeah. ain't know, I ain't even know this chick last name. I ain't never been to her house. I've never met her parents, nothing like that. So you had them fake middle school relationships. Yeah, he yeah. tell me about like, you know, the females in his class and yeah. stuff like that. And yeah. I asked about them, you know. Um, but you know, like real nigga yeah, yeah, yeah. girlfriend, yeah. like yeah, you ain't. I'm like we not like you not finna be going on dates, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, I'm yeah. not finna be supportive, supportive mm -hmm. of those dates until yeah. a certain point. And it don't even really matter with age, honestly. It honestly just depends because my son is so mature. Mm -hmm. So it really just depends on his level of comprehension and understanding when it comes to dating. Mm -hmm. So if he is like. When he turns 10, for example, and he decides that he want a girlfriend or whatever. Okay, cool. You know, if I feel like you have a, a good level of understanding and comprehension of what a girlfriend actually is, mm -hmm. I will support it. Yeah. I'll go and talk to the parents and we can orchestrate some things. We can start going on, you know, supervised dates and things like that. Because what if y'all actually do end up staying together in life? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like things like that can blossom at such an early age like that. So... Um, I'm not against it. It's just it really just depends on how he thinks his mm -hmm. level of maturity. So when you when you when your son brings his first girlfriend home, mm -hmm. are you gonna be the type of mom to like not check her, but really really you know really see what she about? 
put her in a kind of kind of pressure a little bit, good pressure to make her bring her true out. Or you kind of just gonna be like backing off of it, like, all right, I'm gonna let y'all do y'all thing, but I'm gonna watch from afar. Yeah, nah. Um, when he first bring his girlfriend home, um, I don't want to have a a a heavy conversation right then and there. I want us. Well, yeah, I, I, don't, mean, I don't mean right. I don't mean that exact day, mm -hmm. but over you know the course of you know the first few weeks or so mm -hmm. of you know yeah. getting to know her. Um, when I first meet her, I want all of our outings to be in fun spaces. I want her to be comfortable. I want like her, Dave and Buster's. You know, I want her to be comfortable. I want her to bring some of your friends with you too. You know, I want to see how she is, you know, with her people. You know, I want to see how she functions. You know, don't worry about mama. Don't worry about what I'm going to ask you and stuff. It'll yeah. come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you learn more about people when you see them in their zone, when they're not mm -hmm. getting asked a bunch of questions, when they're not, you know, things like that. So I would want to see her first in her zone because at the end of the day, whether I like her or not, if my son choosing to deal with you, then that's just what it is. Yeah. That's a great point. You know? That's like, a great point. So I want to, you know, just have a, a level of understanding of her um, yeah. in a fun setting. Okay. When yeah. she can get comfortable. I like that. That's a good point. Because if you put the pressure on them, then of course they're exactly. going to have the written down answers. And they're already and, expecting it. I'm yeah, meeting mom. Yeah, yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I'm nervous. Da, yeah. Da, da. yeah. Nah, just come relax. <laughs> yeah. So put them, like, get, put them in a comfortable environment. Right. Let them be relaxed. Mm -hmm. And then hit them with the shit. Nah, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> Um, so listen, before we get out here, did you come up with an answer for any celebrity? Okay. So I would uh I would I wouldn't mind dating if he was single, I wouldn't mind dating Kendrick Lamar. K dot. Um I would be interested, this is gonna sound so crazy. I would be interested in talking to Kanye. Talking. Talking. Going on a date with him? Going on a date, learning about him talking to him, seeing really his mind. Like, you know, we see interviews and stuff with mm -hmm. Kanye and stuff like that. But like, like he said, you know, I'm on TV talking like it's just you and me. I'm mm -hmm. just saying how I feel, man. I ain't one of the Cosby's, you know? So yeah. we see that part of him, but then he gets so much like, you know, bashing and stuff like that. So I would want to like talk to Kanye um, to see would I actually date you, but I'm interested enough to have a conversation. Yeah. Oh, I would love to have a convo what? with Kanye as well. I would love to have yeah. a conversation with Kanye. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Kendrick, yeah, I would date Kendrick. Um, okay. It's a nice pick. Yeah. Did you like his album? His, his newest album? Um, Mr. Morale, Big Stuff. It's certain songs I like. It's certain songs that I don't. Well, I ain't going to say that I don't. I just, they don't get playtime. What's, give me your top two favorite songs on the album. Right now, mm -hmm. my favorite two is Count Me Out. I fucking love Count Me and rich spirit rich spirit okay gotcha. is what i've been bumping though nice like i've been bumping that like gotcha. heavy i played that on the way here yeah yeah okay <laughs> um yeah count me out is top two with me as well i mm -hmm. count me out that's what i play like if i feel like i'm about to overcome something or mm -hmm. I, I, I just overcame something yep like oh man count me out mm -hmm. just really makes me feel like i'm on top of a mountain um and then if I'm if also like you know I I use music as therapy so even mm -hmm. if I'm not in the best of mood I'll still go to music just to kind of um, and I think Crown mm. um, can't what is it can't please everybody or can't yeah. can't help everybody yeah when I feel overwhelmed when people yep. are left and right just asking for stuff from me and I'm overwhelmed and then that'll come on on shuffle and I'm like oh shit yeah 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 right um, on time yeah yeah and that's another reason why Kendrick is just so important to for sure. our culture you know what I mean he's just not doing it for hits on the fucking radio nah you know what I mean he's really doing and it. even if he is doing it for hits he doing it to me the right way yeah yeah like I I'm think cool damn damn was you know had a few more that was for hits mm -hmm. I think Mr Morale like he was like all right this is post COVID post 2020. Like shit is, you know, shit has been crazy these past five years. Let me give something. Let me write. Yeah, you know, that's needed for the culture and for the community. What would you say? Like, who's your favorite? Who's your top five artists that you that you've been listening to lately? Yeah, off top, um, Larry June. Okay. Uh, I've never not listened to Jay Z. Okay, same. Nip. Mm hmm. Um, top five. Uh, Future's in there actually. Yeah. Yeah, I listen to a lot of Future. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, and for the last one, top five. I think the last one would be. Hmm. 
The last one is Kendrick. Okay. Honestly, solely off of that album. Like yeah, I've been yeah, listening yeah. to that album nonstop since. So yeah, Kendrick, Larry June, uh, Future, mm-hmm. Jay Z, and Nip. Okay. Um, like I said, Kendrick, that's like, you know, just because of everything. Like that's culture. That's about deeper mm-hmm. than the surface. Not for real. Which Kendrick, I think, is the only person that is bringing that out. Mm-hmm. That's why he's in there. Future, sometimes I need that turn up shit. <laughs> and Future has been 10 plus years the king of that. Yes. Um, now, J- now, Jay-Z, Nip, and Larry June, they're kind of in their own department. Mm-hmm. They're like the uh, motivation, hustler spirit. Yep. You know what I mean? Like like sh- talking with substance yeah. about some shit that a man should stand on, right. that a hustler is about. Mm-hmm. That's what I get from them. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's department. So if I'm turning up future, if I need some shit deeper than the surface, Kendrick, mm-hmm. if I need some motivation on my hustler shit, mm-hmm. um, inspiration, then Nip, Jay-Z, and Larry June. Okay. How about you? What's your five? Um, so my five that I've been listening to lately, hope hopefully I can remember, um, has been Kendrick, mm-hmm. 50 Cent. Now what era of fifth? Um, oh, Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. give it to that try. Yeah. Okay. Oh, 50. Um, and like I said, like that song is not fairly new, but I'm the man by him. Like yeah. that. That's my Came song. Came in as well crying and fussing. Yeah. yeah. Nigga, we ain't had nothing. nothing. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So yeah, Kendrick, 50, Elevator J. He's from Charlotte. Um, Elevator J. What type of music does he uh, make? He got like that good Southern... Uh, type of music like how can I Southern vibe or Southern lyrical I would say both okay I would say both um you gotta send me some of his stuff yeah nah you gonna love his music (laughs) like I love Elevator J um and I I love him real quick like I love Elevator J because like for example he has this one song one song called Drop Mm -hmm. it's kind of like a twerk song for Mm -hmm. females but it's a empowering like Mm. it's but it's if a dude listen to it, a dude gonna fuck with it too. Like yeah. it's just it just hit different. Like yeah. it's just a different type of song. Um, but he loved his city. So in his music, you know what I'm saying, he's talking about Charlotte or he's talking about like that southern hospitality type of, you know, feel to it. So um his beats amazing, like and a lot of the stuff he produced himself. Um yeah, like he's just I don't know, he's just dope. Like I fuck with Elevator. Um so yeah, Kendrick, 50 Cent, Elevator J. Mm-hmm. Uh damn, who else have I been listening to? I've been listening to Natalie Cole. Um, that's Nat King Cole's daughter. Oh wow. Um, I've been listening to her a lot. Um, who is the fifth person? I would say Future. I didn't say Future earlier, but I have been listening to Future. Yeah. Um, as well. Um, and I'm gonna have to add a sixth one. I love David Ruffin. David Ruffin. Temptations. Okay, old school. I love David. Like, yeah. if you my friend and you yeah. don't know, you know what I'm saying? I don't like David. You yeah. don't know that I like David. You're yeah. not my friend. Okay. <laughs> it's just not. I play David every single day. I listen to David every single day. Like, what um what um uh, vibe do you get from David Ruffin, or what space are you in when you most want to listen to David Ruffin? Um, I'm just in a space where like. Or what are you trying to get from it? Like, what do you, what type of feel are you trying to get from that? Just the feel. Mm. Like, I just love David's voice. I love his persona, like the his how deep his voice was. He sung with passion, and like you know, you hear stories about David and how he was or whatever. But like his music don't portray that. Mm. You know, that's not David like that people talk about. Um, that's how I am with, uh, I think Teddy Pendergrass. I listen mm. to. Whether it's straight Teddy P or mm-hmm. uh, Harold in the Blue Notes. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I, I think yeah, Teddy P is mine. So let me ask you something. What's up? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna leave on this one. We're gonna leave with something good. Okay. You just said David Ruffin, he was known for this and that, mm-hmm. but that wasn't his music. Mm-hmm. Do you apply that same uh take towards other artists that have the same type of reputation outside of the studio? And the top two I'm gonna use is R. Kelly and Michael Jackson. I knew it was coming. Yeah. I knew it was coming. Yeah. Um, all right. So with R. Kelly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, if I hear step in the name of love, I'm going to step. There we go. I'm going to step in oh. the name of love. Yeah. 
every time mm -hmm. genuinely yeah. with that energy, mm -hmm. with the good energy of the music that he made, yeah. I'm going to do it. Um, he made a lot of his music with love and maybe some of his music he made with pain, but we ain't know. Right. We just know that it made us feel good. We Some, we didn't have negative energy mm -mm. towards his music. You know what I'm saying? Like and a, and a lot of the best music was made through pain. Through pain. A like a lot of the people, best music. People you know, I'm not excusing the things that he did and the things that people said he did. Mm -hmm. I'm not excusing those right. things. Um but hearing about what he did, um and hearing how people feel about him and his music, like, oh, I'm just not going to listen to his music anymore. And it's like, dang, you're not going to listen to R. Kelly no more mm. because of the situation. It's valid. I'm not saying people, you know, opinion on it and stuff is not yeah. valid. Very valid reason. Um, but you're going to be trying really hard not to dance and not to sing along. That's Very hard. I don't give a fuck what you say. Rock your hips out. You got to turn yeah. it off. Yeah. Just to make sure you don't be in a mood mm -hmm. and in tune with it. Do you know how many babies was made to R. Kelly? Mm. You know how many weddings? You know how many graduations? Cookouts. You know how many people? Like, he wrote songs for people. Like, yeah. it's just so much. But yeah, if I hear Step in the Name, the best way to explain it, if I hear Step in the Name of Love, I'm going to step. You're going to Step in the Name Every of time. Love. Every time. Yeah, I, I'm the same. I tell people, I mean, like, if you ain't trying to listen, I get it. I'm not going to come for it. you, but don't come for me because I'm right. not turning this shit off. Right. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I What he did was awful. I'm not, I, again, I'm not, and we're talking about R. Kelly, but we can say the same for Elvis Presley. We can say the same for Michael Jackson. We can Literally, say the same yeah. for James Brown. We can say the same for David Ruffin. Yeah, we, we might can say the same for your, your daddy or your mama or your brothers. And, ooh, there we go. I'm just saying. There we go. They don't want to hear that, though. <laughs> It'd be a lot. Yo, your it's grandfather. Like it, it'd be a lot that, of that though. going on for real. Like yeah. it, it's it's so crazy. Who was the other artist that you said? That uh, I said James Brown, Elvis Presley. No, no, no. You said uh, when it comes to R. Kelly and somebody else. You said Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I love Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. I, I like. I'm. I'm still going to uh, support his music. And, and and that's always my stand because people that bash R. Kelly will give it, you know, give a pass to Michael Jackson. They like keep you're, singing, Michael. You'll rarely never see someone that's uh, not with R. Kelly be pro-Michael Jackson or, yeah. or be the same energy towards Michael Jackson. They're always pro-Michael Jackson. So my thing is, listen, I'm I'm giving, I'm giving listening to R. Kelly. How you listen to Michael Jackson? No, it's different. It was it's allegations. It was da-da-da-da-da. I mean, technically, R. Kelly is allegations. Too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and... and except, okay, for the, except for the piss. We did a video that... that was, I, I, asked, I, I seen a video seen though. I couldn't see his actual face, and like I'm really not even trying to excuse that. I was it like, looked like him. I was like six when I saw it, but yeah, it looked like yeah, him. Yeah. But there was never confirmation that that was him in that video. Yeah, like well, just saying, like this is not me even trying to like make an excuse. Yeah, but, like, yeah I understand. It was real a, nigga shit. It wasn't shot it's on It's not iPhone. a clear video. Listen, U.S. <laughs> in the U.S., you know, uh, court were innocent or proven guilty. So. You know? As far as what you were saying with that. But yeah, I get it. I get it. I will say too, just to, so we can wrap up, because I know you want to wrap up. <laughs> um, See, the thing is, I need to stop trying to only, I need to stop trying to force it to a certain amount when I do these podcasts. You can have part twos. And, and not only that, I just be like, oh, let me make it 45 or less. Mm -hmm. But then I'd be like, man, fuck that. I've had, I've definitely had an interview that was like an hour and a half, yeah. hour 45 before. But I mean, now, man, I just think with anyone who's, creating anything whether it's a podcast whether you know they're on youtube whatever it is man i don't think people should limit themselves is what yeah. i'm starting to realize i need to stop putting myself in that space where i'll be trying to limit myself this yeah. conversation we've had an hour and a half going on mm -hmm. of great conversation and honestly sev and for the viewers watching and listening i've had i had no script going into going into mm -hmm. this no script we covered you know, a lot of ground. And and we've <laughs> had a, a better conversation over the past hour and a half than I've had with interviews where I've had a script, gotcha. head to toe. You mm. know what I'm saying? But I, I need to stop limiting myself with that. So I just had to, you know, I just had to kind of get on my ass for that. Okay. As, yeah, it'd be like that. Yeah, as you were saying. Um, Damn, what was I saying? My bad. Uh, you good. Um, Oh, one of the things, too, about the R. Kelly and the Michael Jackson and a bunch of other celebrities, uh, situations that I'm learning is... <sighs> Cause it could be anybody shit. That, that shit could be me. Mm -hmm. Not saying I ain't got no shit like that going on. Yeah. I ain't got that going on. You sure? But <laughs> just allegations, yeah. like in general, like, you know, um, a lot of the times when these uh platforms put out articles and stuff about people, 
and we see it, we like, oh my gosh, like they mm-hmm. did this, like Bill right. Cosby. Yes, how the heck? We ain't got no proof None. that Bill did what he did. Yeah. We have no proof, but yeah. the women saying it. And unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? You cannot trust everything everybody say when they're saying that somebody did something to them. Now, don't get me wrong. I have been raped before, you know? Mm -hmm. I've had that done to me. And so, you know, when I said that I was raped, people didn't believe me. Do Mm -hmm. I understand why they didn't? Yes, I understand, because people lie about stuff like that. Um, But something that happened, like, years and years and years ago, and y'all just now trying to goddamn grab and find stuff and, you know, do things. and Added abundance, too. Yeah, Yeah, like, that was the weirdest part I can't fully support that authentically right. i can't like and i don't know these people you know what i'm saying i don't know these people i mm-hmm. don't know if what they're saying is true or not like the whole r kelly situation do i believe some of it is true for sure and do i also believe that a lot of it isn't yes because mm-hmm. literally when that was going on they made a whole documentary about it while it was going on mm. Do you yeah. know how many people hopped on band oh, yeah. when they seen that documentary and was Easy. like, oh, he did it uh-huh. because of the documentary? And they made money from that. That was a product yeah. of that situation, literally. So when he did that interview, I forgot who he did the interview with. It was like a... Um, Gail. Gail yeah. King. When he did the interview with her and he was like, yo, he was crying, <laughs> mm-hmm. literally crying like, yo, this don't make sense. Mm-hmm. Why would I do this? Like, yeah. it was like, okay... Some of this shit don't make sense. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to have to keep it real. Like some of this don't make sense and then some of this do make sense. Yeah. But nonetheless, I think the fact that there was a documentary done while that was literally happening. Yeah. At the end of the day, this shit is entertainment. So right. the fact that y'all was willing to entertain people's minds. Yeah. That lets me know that some of the stuff that y'all threw in there did not actually happen. And some of it did. Like, do I believe he actually messed with little kids? Yes, I definitely yeah, do he believe had that. <laughs> Um, and, and, and just think about how powerful these documentaries are. Whenever it's a popping documentary that happens, I mean, it spreads like wildfire. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like the Jeffrey Dahmer. I ain't even look at that shit. Yeah. What the fuck I want to look at that shit for? Mm-hmm. I already know what type of time that sick fuck was on. Right. I, don't, I know what happened. Mm-hmm. They don't know how. I don't, they don't, I know what the fuck happened. I don't right. need to watch that shit, but everybody was talking about mm-hmm. it and everybody fed their energy into mm-hmm. it. The media controls the narrative and yeah. I'm a, and I'm going to leave on it like this like that's true as fuck and personally I say that it's is true and I'm with you as far as I'm not quick to be- believe something that the media put out whether it's on the news or whether it's an article whatever right. um because when I was 15 I was locked up I was charged as an adult for something I didn't do right. at 15 yeah I had to go to county jail for that shit yeah I wasn't in juvie for something I did not fucking do yeah but I saw the reaction and the energy I was getting from people after they saw my face on the news yep. for an armed robbery. They believed and, that you did it. Yeah. <laughs> and I felt it. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, I really didn't do it. But the fact that they saw it on the media. It was enough. That was way more than my voice saying I ain't do it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Whether they knew me or not. That yep. shit went out the window. Nah, nigga, I saw you on the news. Boy, they they caught your ass slipping yep. armed robbery. You tasing niggas. You poke. Like, what the... F- Nah, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And so it's that easy. So I like yeah. how you brought that up and I 100% agree. And you know, with the doc, I'm, I'm sorry, with no, the documentaries good. and with anything entertainment mm-hmm. wise, you add a little music to stimulate, oh, man. you know what I'm saying? The energy too, when you add people talking about it and stuff, all of that is yes. a stimulant. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to get you to believe yeah. what it is they're trying to get you to believe. 100%. And that's, that's where I'm going to just leave off with that. You saw the Night Stalker? About the dude in the 80s, I think, that was in L.A. Just, I mean, this was fucking sick. Like, he was going to people's houses, killing, raping them, no matter if they was old kids. Like, mm-hmm. he was just wilding out. But you said the because that documentary was very dark. Mm-hmm. Like, all the pictures they showed of him were dark. And whenever they showed a picture of him or someone was describing what happened, they just played the most horror-type music mm-hmm. ever. And that created such a... Uh, that had such an impact on me as yeah. a viewer. I had, Desi had to sleep in my fucking room. I bullshit you not after I watched that. Because be like in you, literally, yeah. like it be in you, it be on you, like yeah. it literally stimulate. Like you got, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to be very like 
It draws in. And you don't even realize it until afterwards. Like, I'm not even realizing it till now, us talking about it, mm -hmm. what the fuck it did exactly. Because you buy into it. And, yeah. you know, I, like I said, I have this saying, every transaction with a person or something is a purchase. Whatever you pay attention to, whatever you spend time with, mm -hmm. is literally what you're buying into. So yeah. either you're going to buy into something that's appreciating or depreciating, but you're making a purchase. Like, yeah. that's transactional. Like, that energy is like, it's crazy how they do things, yeah. for sure. It is. Well, listen, Sev. I highly, highly appreciate you for pulling up to the stew. I had a great time. Me too. That <laughs> was a great convo. Like I said, no script. That's just how it goes sometimes. Sometimes, you know, if someone come through and I know they have substance as far as uh, conversation wise, I don't need a script. We just going to make it happen. And that's what we did. Um, so again, thank you for that. Thank you. Um, of course, everyone that's tuning in, whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on your respective podcast platform, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Day by Day Podcast is everywhere. All that I ask is that if you're listening, like, hit a five star if you thought it was a five star and drop a comment, share it. If you're watching on YouTube, mm -hmm. I ask that you like, hit subscribe and same thing, share it. It helps with the growth of this whole thing. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. I appreciate y'all regardless for tuning in. Um, so make sure that you hit subscribe. That way you can be kept up to date on every future episode. Yep. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane out here, rise above the madness, but most importantly, stay blessed. Peace.